Greetings everyone, welcome back to Radar Ceramics. In today's video, I'm going to be going through the basics of throwing that includes centering, opening, pulling, and shaping, or forming, if you may say. I'm going to start off with centering. Centering is the beginning of throwing. It's the first step. First, you want a lump of clay that's already wedged. You want to slap that lump of clay in the center of the bat. <coughs> You can move it a bunch, you can slap it to make it center, and make sure it stick onto the bat. You don't want it, when you throw it, the clay get flung across the room. I've seen so many people do that, even their bat, good thing. So you also want to make sure your bat is properly on the wheel. If you can move the bat and you can feel the tiny movement, your bat is not exactly on the wheel. So I'm going to take some lump of clay off and position them between the bat and the wheel and just squeeze it, make it stick together. Now that your clay is and the bat is on the wheel, you can start centering. The first method I'm going to be introducing is the most classic and easy to learn one. To prepare this, you want to first push your chair forward as close to the wheel as you can. Take your arm, place it on the hip bone. Right here, you want to firmly place it on the hip bone. And you want to push with your hip bone as well as your arm to give maximum strength and stability. You don't want to push it at like this, or just like this, because this way, when you are pushing the clay, the clay is gonna push you back and your hands are gonna wobble, therefore you can't center. Another trick, if you are very skinny like me, and don't have much body weight, you can also use your leg, hook it around the leg of the wheel, and push it with your whole body. Use your entire body, strength instead of just your skinny arms. Look at those skinny arms. What you do is you take your hand, left hand, this part, push in, push toward the center, into the clay. You take the side of your palm on your right hand right here, push, push, place it on top of the clay and push it down so that you have force, go pushing in, make it up, and you have force pushing down and make it wide. That equalizes the force and make it centered and stable. Now that everything is ready, I can start centering. First, I'm gonna take a finger and go around the bottom and seal the clay onto the back. Next, I'm gonna set the wheel to a right speed that is fast and put my feet down from the pedal. When I'm centering, I want to use a lot of water. You can grab a sponge in your right hand to squeeze water out when you need it. This clay now is somewhat centered. And that's the first basic way of centering. The second way I'm gonna demonstrate is I learned from China, where you instead, you're gonna put your chair backward and lean forward with your arm laid sideways onto the back. Like this. And then pushing. You see my hand? My right hand is using my this part of my hand to push in, and my left hand is holding the clay and using the thumb to push down. Oops. 
One important thing is when you let go, when you're, when you're centering and you want to let go, you want to let go slowly. If you let go too quickly, the clay might uncenter itself. Now I'm going to fully center the clay because I want to center it using a different method. The third method, of course there's many other methods, depending on what you prefer, is literally just hugging it. You use a pinky on the very bottom to hold the clay up and hugging it from the two sides, pressing it down using your thumb. Of course, water. The last method I'm going to teach you is coning, which is by far, I think, is the best method. It's easy to use, it requires less strength, and it helps mix the clay. Coning, not only it helps mix the clay, it is also a better method if you're, for say, centering a large quantity of clay. What you do for coning, is you want to grab the clay from the bottom and push it up towards to form a cone. Let's speed it up a little. Mm -hmm. Now that I have formed a cone, I want to press the cone down. Instead of pressing it straight down, I'm going to press it at an angle, at more or less forward. I'm going to do this repeatedly until it is centered and or think the clay is well mixed. You want to make sure your clay is centered while you start before you start throwing, or you're gonna hate yourself a lot. Most people are stuck at centering for a long time, but the best suggestion I can give you is to just do it a lot. The more you do it, the better you will do at it. I like to hug it a little bit. In the end, 
So this cli is now centered. What to do next is opening. But first, I'm going to stop the wheel and tell you how to practice centering. What I used to do to practice centering is I'll have a large clump of clay. I'll center the clay. I'll knock it over, center it again, knock it over, center it again. You just and you center it again. Literally do this over and over again until the large cup of clay is completely melted in water and gone. At that point, you're probably decent at centering. You just do that many, many times, or just do regular centering, just do regular throwing, and you eventually get good at centering. But you will get stuck on centering for a long time. Don't worry, everybody does that. Now, I'm gonna recenter the clay and introduce you to the second step of throwing. Open. This play is going to be hard to work with. Now that the clay is centered, I can start opening. There's two ways of opening. The first way is simply dig down. You use two fingers or more, avoid the very center of the clay, slightly off, and dig down. You see like a stick of clay popping off and you just toss the stick of clay away, that's fine. The second way of centering is you first make a dimple, first make a dip in the middle of the clay, slightly going down, and then start from there. You take a sponge, or you can just use your finger, and then you slide it down. It's a more clay efficient way of opening. You want to have a hand on the side of the clay while opening to stabilize it. When you're digging down, you need to make sure you don't go all the way through or your piece is not going to have a bottom. A very interesting way of measuring it is stick a finger another finger on top. So this is about the depth of my piece right now. And I place it on the side, push it in, I can know I have about this much on the bottom. That means I have about this much on the bottom. I can go deeper. And after I think I reach the place, I'm going to first 
get the water out. And then use two fingers because I think it's more stable. And a sponge because I think that will make it smoother. Not in terms of climbing smoother, in terms of easier to slide around. Water, you want to make sure your fingers, even though behind the sponge, be absolutely straight. If your finger bends a little bit, you're, when you open it, you're going to have very uneven opening or even wobbling. Again, you also still want a hand on the outside to stabilize it. And you just put it in and pull. Again, do not let go too quickly. Stay there for a little bit. Make sure you stabilize it or you wobble. Now I've opened my piece. I'm going to test it if it's actually too thick or too thin. You can do this by experience. Or if you don't have much experience, you can take a needle, stuck it down, put your finger on the connection point and pull out. Then I'll know I have about this much on the bottom, which is a bit too thick for me. So I'm going to dig down a little bit more. You want to dig down from the center and go out. When you reach the end, stop there for a little bit so that you don't destabilize the clay. After you have opened the clay successfully, you want to compress the bottom. Take a sponge, rib, pen, whatever. You want to push it down in the bottom, in, out, in again, out again. You want to use force to make sure you compress the bottom well so it does not crack. And that's basically open. So after you have finished opening, it's time to move on to pulling. There's many, many different ways of doing the pulling itself but I'm going to show you my way. There's essentially two strategies of pulling. It depends on whether you want to pull it tall or you want to pull it wide. To pull it wide, you want your inside hand to push while your outside hand is to porch. And if you want to pull it high, you want your outside hand to push while the inside hand to support. Essentially, I would like to use my inside hand support like this and my outside hand wrap it around a sponge, which you can choose not to, on the outside, and then move up together in uniform. Try to use the same force from bottom to top. You want to always finish your pull. One pull always has to finish from bottom all the way to the top. You want to use slightly lower speeds on your wheel compared to that of you are centering. I usually like to use my first pull on the same level so that it evens out the clay so it's easier for me to pull for the next pull. And the next pull is what gives the most height. When you reach this stage, you have sort of an uneven top and it's a little bit wobbly. Whenever this happens, you want to compress the top by pinching it from the both sides but not using force as a support and you squeeze from the top. This will condense the clay so it does not wobble later. Now when I form this cone shape, I can now start to pull the clay from the bottom all the way to the top. To do this, 
you want to have, have a little groove on all the way at the bottom. Your inside hand again support, and then your inside use your inside hand push out just a little bit, and then pull up slightly earlier than your outside hand. So your inside hand will be higher than the outside hand, such as this, right? Then you pull it this way, pull it this way. You want your outside hand to follow your inside hand. I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Again, don't use force on the inside hand. Only use force on the outside hand. You can also hug the clay to stabilize it. And on the top, don't forget to compress the rim. I'll do it again. That was pretty of a risky pull, where well, I pulled a lot of height, but the clay itself is not stable. So I want to do a stabilizing pull, meaning they move at the same height. A, a height pull is what you use your right hand to follow your left hand, while a stabilizing pull is when they're the same height. Remember, still use water. A stabilizing pull stabilizes the clay and evens it out. If you feel like your hand will, walk, will wobble a lot, try to lean it against your leg. Now do another height pull. Look at how I make a little groove on the bottom before I pull. So I squeeze the clay in, grab the clay from the inside, pull from the pull up from the inside, and follow it up with my right hand. I need to compress the top now. Don't forget to compress the top once in a while. Again, I want water. Making a little groove. Sponge. Pull again. I think I'll do one last pull for stabilizers as a stabilizer and I'll call it done. I'll move on to shaping. Don't be afraid to use a rib to further stabilize or straighten it.
slow the wheel down a little bit. Make sure I can get rid of as much wobble as possible. So now we have a cylinder. A good way to practice pulling is to make cylinders. Grab like two pounds of clay and just make a bunch of cylinders. Don't try to shape it, just pull it, make a cylinder. Next one, pull it, make a cylinders. If you keep practicing that, you will be good at pulling. Now you can see the top is a little bit uneven and wobbly, so I'm gonna cut it off using a needle and just lay on the side and slowly move in. Use a finger on the inside of support and when I feel the needle, I can take my, take that off, just like this. Good. Firm up the rim, fix up the rim a little bit. And then I'm gonna, remember, there's a lot of water inside, so I'm gonna just sponge and take the water out. Now for, for shaping, you can use various tools, wooden ribs, usually, people usually like to use ribs, like wooden ribs, uh, metal ribs of different shape. It helps, them, it helps them shape the piece by a lot. Some people like to not use tools, that's fine as well. The sponge is just fine. So I'm gonna use a straight rib first. And I'm going to try to make a picture. So I'm going to, so at this stage, I'll have to use my feet on the pedal to control the speed very carefully. I essentially want to push from the inside and stabilize it on the outside. You can use a lot less water in this stage. But it is still necessary. And it's fine to not pull all the way through since you're shaping a specific region. Ooh, that's bad for the wheel. I don't know what happened there, but it could have cost me my piece. So I'd be very careful because it's pretty thin on the bottom there. Refine the shape on the bottom using a kidney rib.
usually when you shape it, you want the wheel to be slow, so you can get more exaggerated forms. Sometimes you go too risky and your pieces collapse. It just happens, it happens to the best of us. There's nothing you can do about it. Just try not to do that next time. So my piece down there is pretty thin and I have worked on this clay for a while, meaning it is very easy to break. Therefore, I'm gonna get a blowtorch or a heat gun to essentially solidify my bottom before I move on to the top. Don't forget to turn off your wheel or if you accidentally step on the, pe step on the pedal, the whole scene is going to turn off your wheel before you leave it. All right, I'm back. You see, some may say that ceramic is the most fun thing to do because you get to play with mud and fire at the same time. That's probably enough. I'm now gonna show you how to choke the beats, meaning shrink the width. There's many ways of doing it. One way, the easiest way is just hold it, your hand like this, and then squeeze in and up. The second way of doing it is using this part of your hand, like this. I never understand how the people do it, but apparently they do it. Or you can just simply use, if it, the width is too small, you can just use fingers and squeeze in. When you're doing this, make sure you go all the way. And when you choke a piece, it's gonna get thicker, so you wanna pull it a little bit, pull a little bit every time you do it. You can also use only use one hand on the choking side and another one on top to stabilize it. Be patient with your choking. Sometimes you don't need to go all the way at once. You wanna let you wanna do it steady and a little bit at a time. Or your piece is just gonna fall.
it's getting weak. So I'm going to use a blowtorch again. Before I finish the top so my arm couldn't get in, I'm gonna put a shaping on the bottom one last time so I get the shape I want. Because this is a video, I'm not gonna do too much detail. So I'm just gonna finish off by smoothing it out and shaping it one last time. Don't forget to smooth out your rim at the end or you'll get a too sharp of a rim. You do it by essentially just squeezing it from both, from all sides. And because I'm making a thatcher, I'm going to make a spout at the top. To do this, I essentially just wet my hand a little bit. Find a spot I want to make the sprout. Have a finger on the inside and two fingers on the outside. Like this. And then go that. Do it again. You push on the inside and support on the outside. And that's how you get a sprout.
This is a pretty ugly looking picture, but I get my point through. And that's how you shape your piece. I've demonstrated centering, opening, pulling, and shaping. Tomorrow we're gonna add a handle to this picture. But now for the last step, I'm gonna get this off the bat. We should take a wire, get some water, and just go through it. Unbox, and it's off the bat. If you don't feel safe removing this off the bat, you can just literally take the bat off. But remember you just put on a clay around it in the beginning, so you gotta get rid of those. And you could use anything from a rib to a screwdriver to take it off. And it is off. There it is. Look at it. Derpy looking picture. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Maybe comment down below. See you in the next one. Thank you.